Hey everybody, welcome back to the Extras channel, hence my casual attire today. Uh, we are going to be unboxing a new 4K Blu-ray player here. This is the Oppo UDP203. Uh, this is their uh, kind of their low range model, but it is a high end brand. And unfortunately, this one's kind of an endangered species along with the other Oppo 4K Blu-ray player because they are going to be halting production on this. And everyone's been telling me this is the one to get, so I have bought one. Um, these cost about $550, not cheap. Uh, but if you've been following my adventures in getting my 4K home theater set up upstairs, you'll know that I've been uh, trying a few different things. And uh, my report right now as to where things stand is that I was not satisfied with the Xbox One S as my 4K Blu-ray player. That was probably my biggest mistake of this uh, experiment so far. The TV up there is great, the LG OLED, but... I was not getting everything I wanted out of that Xbox, and I didn't have anything that could play back a 4K Dolby Vision movie like the new Star Wars film here, so I wanted to get something that could uh, play this movie back the way uh, I was hoping to be able to watch it, and I didn't have anything to do that, so uh, hence I went with this Oppo player before they completely uh, lost their spot on the face of this earth. They are going to be supporting this for a while, but uh, they will be halting production shortly, and this is, again, a very... Uh, good player from all that I've heard. So we're going to be uh, doing a full review of this on the main channel shortly at LAN.TV. So here's a nice little card here to show you what you're getting. A very attractive unit here. And I think it's got some network playback capability, which we'll explore in the video, because as you all know, my preference with these films uh, is to rip them and put them on a network attached storage device, because I like to be able to have access to my uh, movies anywhere in the house. Now with the 4K stuff, I only really have one TV that can play this stuff back effectively, but uh, nonetheless, I still like the convenience of just clicking a button and having my movie come up, uh, which is something that hopefully this will provide. But if I rent a movie or something like that, I can just pop it in and play it and get the best uh, playback function here. So my wife will be very pleased because we've got yet another uh, remote control to add to the collection upstairs. This thing is huge. Look at the size of this. I wonder if it's backlit, probably. Uh, so that's the remote. Here is the power cord. And then, of course, you get an HDMI cable in the box. Always nice to see high-end gear come with the cable. And batteries are included here. That's nice to see. So that is that part. We've got lots of foam in here to get rid of. And we've got the player under this part here. Let me stand up and get the rest of it unboxed here. So it's in like a little shopping bag here. All right, put the box down here, and let's get this sucker unboxed here and see what it looks like. It is actually a shopping bag. That's funny. That's cool. See, now I can really impress my friends when I go grocery shopping because I have the 4K Ultra HD shopping bag. That is so cool. So let's get this thing out. And then, like I said, I'll have a full review of this after I've played with it. And my plan is this weekend to uh, watch some movies because the kids are going out of town with my wife. So I've got the house to myself. I can blast my home theater at night, maybe invite some friends over. By the way, I really like the new Star Wars movie. A lot of people don't like it, but I think it's a great film because it's unexpected and uh, new, which is good. All right, so here's the front of the player. Let me get the uh, camera zoomed in a bit so we can get a closer look at that. Uh, so there you go. Oops, a little too far. So you can see what it looks like here on the front. Uh, so looks like you've got a lot of controls that you can do here. There's a USB port there. Very attractive and high-end looking. I think this is going to be like the most attractive component I have upstairs. On the back here is where we've got all the other stuff. So uh, we have gigabit ethernet here, which is great. So we can hopefully stream some movies to it. Now here's something cool. You've got HDMI out for video, but you also have an HDMI output for audio. And this actually might have solved my problem. So one of the other problems I had when I first switched over all this 4K stuff was that my home theater receiver did not support uh, 4K. It didn't have the right HDCP copy protection on it. So I had to buy a new receiver uh, because I couldn't get everything running through uh, in a single cable. This one actually allows you to use an older receiver. So you could plug this portion directly into your television that supports the new 4K copy protection. And then uh, you can run it out to your receiver with the audio output here. That was, that's pretty cool. Here is an HDMI input. I got to figure out what that's all about. Optical out, coax out. Uh, you got two USB 3.0 outputs here. Uh, RS-232, I would imagine this is for hooking it up to one of those uh, home theater automation systems. 
trigger here as well. I would imagine that's uh, something similar. Looks like there's an IR receiver perhaps here in the back. I'm not sure. I've got to look into that in the instruction book. And then you've got some, uh, looks like a component. Oh, these are five. Okay, so they have uh, distinct audio outputs here. So it looks like it's got its own um, audio decoding as well built into the box here. So this is nice. High-end stuff here. I'm not used to having high-end stuff here. So uh, we'll be playing around with this. So what I'm going to do uh, is get this thing hooked up later tonight after I get all of my other work done. And I'm going to start playing with this. And then sometime next week, I'll probably have a full review of the Oppo player here and uh, talk about all the things that I like about it. And hopefully it will uh, become my de facto player upstairs. My preference still... Uh, for the 1080p sets remains the NVIDIA Shield because, again, that one works really well in my streaming environment. Problem with the Shield right now, though, is that it doesn't support Dolby Vision. And the other problem I'm having with it upstairs is that it doesn't switch color modes automatically. So if I am playing back a 4K HDR movie, no problem. But if I load up a 1080p Blu-ray, it doesn't switch my TV out of that 4K color space back to what you would normally have on an HD television. And this is stuff that be honest with you, I could have cared less about uh, six months ago, but now that I've got this TV upstairs, I'm getting crazy about this color space stuff, and I want it all to be the way it's supposed to be. So hopefully this will uh, solve that problem for us, and unfortunately it is an, a dying uh, brand here, but these are still available. Uh, I don't think you're going to get a good deal on one because I think they're going to be uh, selling out before they go extinct, and I'm sure a lot of the home theater installer people and other enthusiasts are going to want to kind of kind of hoard them. So uh, we'll see how it works out, and we'll have a full review before it goes extinct so you can decide whether or not you want to get in on one too. So stay tuned. We'll have a full review coming up soon on the main channel at lon.tv. This channel is brought to you by the lon.tv supporters, including gold-level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.